Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pathfinder Knights of Everflame post Q&A. I am Chris Fischel, the producer and director of the show, and I am here with all of the wonderful people. Uh, <laughs> we will go over here. I have uh, Jason Bullman, our benevolent uh, GM. Uh, yes. got, uh, <laughs> Which is very benevolent. When does the benevolent <laughs> GM show up? I don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Stephen Walker, our Iculus uh, champion. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gina DeVivo, omelet. Who That's did me? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, over here, we've got uh, Rachel Seeley, Linnaeus. Hello, how are Hello. you? Hello, I'm great. I don't yeah. have my Beatles today. No, no Beatles. No. They're taking a nap. Uh, oh, Tariel, aka good. Erica Fermina. Hi. <laughs> and we have Aki in via Skype, via satellite. Aki, how are you? Good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we hear we hear the the, the music still. <laughs> <laughs> Aki gets intro music. That's fair. <laughs> How's it going, Aki? It's going all right. Hold on. <laughs> you shouldn't be hearing music, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're all good. We're all good. All right, well, um, hey, let's get in and uh, start with the um, exciting news that I think we're all pumped about, which oh, yeah. is uh, season two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, season I, I, two. I, yeah. <laughs> love it. Two. There's no better way to close a season that you all love and put your heart and souls into. Yeah. But to have the news that you know it gets to go on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It means I don't, do yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't have to do any yeah, of the. Yeah, I don't have to do any of the tearful like. Yeah, exactly. Oh well, we'll see you all later. <laughs> right? yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So we will be coming very, very soon. Please stay tuned for dates. That info will be coming out uh, very, very soon. But uh, uh, Jason, what's it like to not be in my in this seat right here? It's really weird, and I'm afraid you're going to start rolling dice and killing me. <laughs> do it. I'm just, do it. That's do what it. happens to do people it. in these chairs, and it's making yeah. me real uncomfortable. It's what you deserve. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm using your dice. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yes. no yes. deal. No can we deal. can we make it a stipulation of season two that you don't get that dice? <gasps> yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I it's don't. In I, contract. I, oh, it I is. Oh, it. I see. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was put it out there. It was put out there as a suggestion, but really, it's just contractual. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah, no, that's fair. He's yeah. gonna be like, fine. I just got yeah. some. Yeah. 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 more like, evil yeah. dice. Yeah. So yeah. You're no. Good. And yeah, sorry. I'm gonna speak off camera for a second. Yeah, Devin, there's no way I'm gonna be able to read that. So we may just need to do printouts and and gradually feed them. Uh, so we're it. talking about how I'm going to receive your questions. I don't have the greatest eyesight. Chat's very small over there. Um, but uh, please uh, oh. send your questions in. <laughs> oh. Is that better? I, I, I also have a light in my face. And <laughs> no, I'd right. much rather yeah. have a printed piece of paper. But anyways, we'll do this <laughs> gradually. Um, please send in your questions. We'd love to know what, you, uh, what you're asking. Um, and uh, everybody's excited to, uh, to give their answers. Um, I'll go ahead and start with... Um, one of the questions that I have for, okay. for one of all y'all, uh, Gina. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. First time ever playing a barbarian yes. in, in any game system. Any game system. You were nervous about it. I was incredibly nervous. How do you feel now? Uh, way better. Okay. <laughs> so, so turns out you get to hit a lot of things, and a lot of damage, and there's a lot of fun things that you can stack together to just keep hitting things. It's really fun. Um, mainly, I just I'd never played a fighter character. I've always played magic users. I just love magic users. I think it's really fun, and you get to stay ranged, not right there. Um, I learned both lessons. <laughs> it's really fun to be a barbarian, but you're also right there. Um, which is, I, 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 I loved it. Yeah. When, once you get the hang of it, which didn't take that long. I, I was very nervous that I just, that the mechanics would just be foreign to me because I'm not used to fighters. And it wasn't at all. It was like, oh, this is great. It just, it's, it's right there. It's so easy. I can do it. And, and just smash a bunch of things. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sorry, uh, if this isn't obvious with this being a post Q&A, this will be riddled with spoilers. Uh, <laughs> We'll be talking about the season, and uh, speaking of which, being right up there in the front, <laughs> you had a, a, a close uh, brush of. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Oh you you mean the almost death? Yeah. You mean that? You <laughs> the mean my death. Uh, dying to and doomed? Mm -hmm. 
You mean my mm-hmm. one death I love that condition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my He's all condition. like... Mm-hmm. You know, when we were designing the game, that was one of the last things that got added, actually. We were we were trimming and cutting conditions, and I was like, you know what? We need a condition that when you get it, everybody at the table goes, oh, no, I don't want that. <laughs> and, uh, it's it like, what are we going to call it? And I just looked at everyone and went, doomed. And that's just what we called it. Yeah. So you all laughing maniacally around yeah. the table? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what we do. We live in a dark pit and we make great. rolls. It's great. Uh, the corpse gosh. throwing mechanic, that's always a good one. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. mine. Yeah, that's yeah. another one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, just the idea of picking up a corpse and throwing it like a me, missile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, that was one of mine. Yeah. Yeah. Can, here's my question. Can yes. people do that? Because I If you weren't big enough, I mean, I mean, yeah, sure. You could probably learn it. Yeah, you just need to get big. Goes away, and I just make a giant, and that's all I do. Is throw <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's that's I quite the uh, that's quite the development between season one and two. She comes back with a corpse throwing giant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly, nice. I think we? it would be a good addition to our team. <laughs> yeah, we need a familiar. Can I, yeah, yeah. Can I get a companion aside from my Aki. Uh, let's let's check in with Aki really quick. What 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 would you throw into the mix here for season two? What would what would you like to add uh, and and force on Jason to allow? Um. Wow, that's a pretty good question. I think what I would love to see is the ability to drag my friends away from certain death. (laughs) And you chose a halfling. (laughs) No dice. (laughs) Uh, Well, while we're we're with while we're with Aki here, um, one of my one of my favorite moments from the entire campaign, and I know that this was a special moment that happened off camera between you and Jason, but Talk to me about um, Andless Staff and and how all of that transpired. So after after um, Holgast passed away and we had just finished up that first big like battle um, at Cassin, I was kind of um, in a bit of a difficult position because most of what I do is ranged, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm always going to be a safe distance away from our opponents. And very often Jason made sure I wasn't, I got hit a lot. <laughs> I was supposed to stay really far away. And I realized I didn't have anything that could do any decent amount of damage against undead. And I really wanted to do something that connected me to Adela because my first, um, the, the first impression that Liz made with her wasn't really all that great. And I, we had gone through the whole meeting her father and like kind of giving him the bad news that perhaps his daughter was dead. I was like, well, this whole town like uh, specializes in wood carvings and making beautiful things. And I was like, maybe if I can get myself like a billy club or some sort of bludgeoning weapon, that's a little bit more effective. If I end up in close proximity to like these creatures, that'll be good. So that was kind of the conversation that I had with, with Jason. It was just like, I just want to feel a little bit more effective if I end up up close and personal with these things, because right now I don't. And Jason, what was your side of that? So interestingly enough, um, uh, when Aki came to me between sessions, uh, they asked for uh, a weapon to help with skeletons, right? Because the skeletons are resistant to bludgeon- everything but bludgeoning. And um, I didn't really have anything in the story for that. Um, so I kind of just put a note that was like, find a way to get Liz a staff or a club or something. I really didn't know where that was going to go until uh, Liz decided to go talk to Colvin. And um, I'm going to be honest, I had lived it. Um, the, really, the, the, really staff, the staff was ad-libbed. And, 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 and you'd be surprised how much of that actually happened based on your interactions, right? Mm. I, 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 and, and this goes for all of the kind of closer character moments. All of that was kind of not in my script. I didn't know where you were going to take it. My script contained encounters and like, yeah, there's some monsters that attack and here's mm. some driders and make them creepy. That was actually in my <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> good job. Uh, <laughs> but you know, most of the time it was it was really just me taking what my amazing cast was giving me and and working with it and finding a way to make it kind of pop and 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 be a natural part of the story. The staff is does not appear in my notes anywhere. Yeah. Um. But it it was something that just felt right at the time. Yeah. Um. So I went with it. Very and that's cool. the beauty of RPGs, though, is just how these organic things just. 
come to come to play on the fly and happen beautifully. Yeah. We do have a, a, a system here that I can read now. Um, <laughs> so I have a, I have our first question from chat, and this is actually funny. Um, yes, indeed, next season we'll have an Inspire Courage flag. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, wait, I'm like, oh, I, I was going to make one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm the one inspiring Courage. I will pick the flag. <laughs> Literally, when Jason, Jeremy, and Gina and I were, were uh, working earlier today, I specifically said, <laughs> yep. oh, by the way, there will be a fan fancy inspire courage flag yeah. so we need an yes. inspire courage flag but we also need a bless flag as well yes. so that you're both casting you are more than welcome to make them so. craft night yeah. craft night yeah, yeah all right no yeah. we're gonna we're gonna make and Tina right. will yeah. be around yeah. craft night yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll just sit there and watch. Okay. And I'm going to get a big giant red bloody <laughs> benevolence flag, and I'm just going to yeah. raise that. Oh. Benevolence t-shirt. Yeah. We're going to make our own benevolence, but it's going to be in quotation marks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> With thumbs down. You're not yeah. the <laughs> we are Dislike. the crackers. We yeah. decide what this uh, is. Uh, <laughs> the um, okay, the so we. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out is we had an incredibly... Um, we had quite a bit of unique mounts coming through on this adventure, considering we didn't ride much. <laughs> um, but uh, well, you <laughs> you <look> at hockey. <laughs> <laughs> um, we really only rode once, I believe. Um, and uh, but we have the majestic mount. Oh my! You mean my phantom steed? <laughs> yes. Uh, I'd like to point out uh, we had Linnaeus pulling a Gandalf. Uh, <laughs> running yes. in there at the end yeah. um, on yes. horseback. You pulling... Uh, First time ever on a horse with Pudge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pudge. <laughs> well, and you built up that uh, the camaraderie with them pulling the... Uh, the cart. Yes, and feeding them lots and lots of treats. Yes. <laughs> and, and this actually had no question to it. I just wanted to point that out, that we had quite a bit of oddness when it came to, to mouse. We did become a horse, and then we were like, we didn't need yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. had another you horse. Had the magic I, speed, yes. I had no time. You were like, <laughs> I'm going to do it. It, it wouldn't have mattered. And you were already strapped in, and I was like, and I, I would have been like, great four horse power. Let's <laughs> yeah. do this. Yeah. Yeah. I want to stay It was hitch. very character. Yeah. There's lots of character flavor. Like, I'm yeah. just going to let her do it. <laughs> there was that moment where all of a sudden I realized that it wasn't. Like there, there's there's people playing characters, mm -hmm. and you can play your character as if they're panicked. But then you reach that moment when I'm pretty sure the the players get panicked, oh, yeah. and they're like, "Oh my god, get get the wagons off the road. We'll pull them ourselves." <laughs> yeah. Right? And it's just like, "Oh, they're yeah. panicking. Yeah. All right, I'm we just gonna sit the last back." Scene. We're yeah. all like panicked to crap. I oh, almost yeah. passed out. Like as soon as you stopped talking, I just reached over the table and I went stabilize. And I needed you to know yeah. that I was gonna stabilize Omelet at the first possible second. Not let her yeah. That was hardcore. That, yeah. I, I don't think my I mean, uh, rewatching it back because yeah. it's one thing to experience it and it was I, it was it was it wasn't so much panic as I had, as soon as I got stabbed the second time. Mm -hmm. after I, when, when, Once you were down. When Emma yeah. made eye contact mm -hmm. with you and was just like, ha ah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> the time. Then I kind of already, I, I, I went straight into mourning mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, it no. might happen. Because I don't know if any of you know this, that would have been my first ever player character death, uh, or character death. So I was already preparing for the emotions of having to have that happen <laughs> on camera. So I just was, the whole time I was sitting there, I, you, I'm just holding my face because I'm trying not to cry. Because mm. I was so sad because I love Omelette so much. Mm -hmm. And I love playing with you guys. And I was like, no, but Omelette wants to know where you're from. Omelette wants to know, like, <laughs> do we get that? Like, and I was and I was like, maybe she doesn't get to be there for that. And so I was like, already mourning? <laughs> <laughs> Like the whole half of the thing. <laughs> I know. I was like, I was the, oh, the whole half of the, the last half of the, the, the battle. I was just so in my own head of just don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. <laughs> and then I was waiting for the when do I have to do my final mm -hmm. die to find out is this it? And then you did it for me, and I didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, we, you we rolled it. Talked yeah. about that. I think after the episode, you yes. and I were like, you were like, you were so rattled. You're like. That was almost my first death. Yeah, that was <laughs> like was, you can tell, I lose yeah. my character voice. Yeah, I, yeah, I became me. Like, I like mm -hmm. didn't have the yeah. accent anymore. I got really quiet, <laughs> and I was like, 
wow, I was really shook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Super. yeah. So when, when, when your turn came around for the check to be made, yeah. we were still in the middle of the fight. And I was like, I'm not stopping for that no. because it'll disrupt the entire stream. So I just rolled it and set it to the side. And I knew what the result was, but I was like, I'm not telling anyone because I want them to act as if you are still in mortal peril no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I do have to say, wow, I don't, I don't want that kind of pressure to be your first <laughs> killer GM. <laughs> Play a game between yeah. now and season yeah. two and get killed by somebody I, else. I, that can't I, be mine. I, yeah. I, that's the funny thing. I play so many games. It would. It's a miracle. Yeah. It's a miracle. I'm, I'm gonna need to talk to one of your GMs. This is. <laughs> <laughs> because teach them about the benevolence. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Oh no. Yeah. 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 And we'll just cry. kill all the characters. No, I, I will there cry. I, I will uh, cry, actually. <laughs> I've never lost a character either. I haven't either. Oh. <laughs> I've played so much less than you do, and, yeah. and, and Eric Campbell is a very nice GM, and he's killed me. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's be real. I've had a character death under Eric Campbell. Okay, yeah. so we can be clear <laughs> that we can be clear that ten candles doesn't count. No, no. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, it's a given. Oh, I did yeah. have to die there. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Also, meat grinders don't count. Yeah. Yeah. No, because you're supposed yeah. to. Because yeah. you know, that's, that's you go so, like knowing. So that's now cool. I'm starting to wonder. Wait, have you died ever in a role playing game? Well, ten candles. Yeah. Okay, so no, Aki, have have you died? In a session? No. 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 Oh, no. Oh, okay, wait a second, everybody. <laughs> Why are we putting this in his head? <laughs> I know, like, right? Because he just said it made him feel bad. Yes. Oh. You can't, you can't kill him. My God. <laughs> our, first, our first Pathfinder characters. You can't kill them. Yeah, please. You can't. Yeah. Because they they're, they're legends. They're, they're in the game now. They're in the game. Uh, yeah. It's in the game. No, you yeah, no, it's fair. Yeah, no, they it's fair. Survive. Yeah, they yeah, have so. a lot of stuff to do. Well, you, you definitely <laughs> all need to survive the season two. Yeah, so yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, we got our next question from chat here. Let's start with Aki. Um, did, uh, did the cast have a different character or class that they wanted to try but didn't? Hmm. Um, the other class that I was looking at actually happened to be champion. That was the other one I was looking at if I didn't do ranger. Um, that was kind of the first thing that sort of floated around in my brain. And then when I found out that Jeremy was playing, and I was like, uh-uh, not me. Definitely Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> so. But you loved your ranger. You love your ranger. I adore Liz with my entire heart. Liz is amazing. They are my garbage child and I love <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think that we can all say the same. Yes. We all love Liz. We all yep. love Liz. Yeah. Uh, Gina, how about you? Yeah. Any other classes that were interesting to you that uh, maybe you're going to try some other time? No. no uh, I, I, it's funny because Barbarian was my first go-to. It was because it's the only kind of class because, again, it was like, do I want to do magic? No. Try, challenge yourself. And so I was like, well, Barbarian seems fun, maybe hard. I don't know. Let's figure it out. So Barbarian was my first choice. But I did almost pick Goblin as my race. Because <laughs> oh, wow. I love playing goblins. Love it. Any chance I get, I will play a goblin. But I have so I've done I've done so many that I'm like, oh, again. Too many goblins. Try a different thing. Let's see. But, but forever, forever, goblins will have a very special place in my heart. All right. Well, I think you made the right choice. Thank you. Omelet <laughs> omelet's great. omelet's cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Omelet couldn't be better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but omelet could be better. But can imagine if omelet was a goblin? Goblin, <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, Erica, was there uh, was there any other classes that really piqued your interest before you um, uh, went bard? I think originally I was looking at doing a goblin druid. <laughs> all the goblins. Uh, had a full goblin, goblin party. only campaign. <laughs> and that's what I want. That's yeah. what I want. That's all I want is just a full goblin campaign. Yeah. But I was looking at goblin druid. Um, but then I think we needed, we didn't have any, what was it, ar arcane spellcasters? Yeah. And I was like, I can fill that role. Yeah. So I was like, bard. Yeah. Half elf bard. Well, plus the artist in you. Yeah. Sort of was an organic. I don't play bards that often. Yeah. I think I I only play one other bard. <laughs> <laughs> this is some GGG insider. No, no, no. <laughs> it's just some, it's oh. just some Erica and Rachel nonsense. Fair enough. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Idiot characters, two twin dwarves. They're just they're little preteen kids. Mm. So stupid. <laughs> so dumb. As the most, most preteen kids. The most obnoxious. And their name. As most preteen kids. Their names Pigeon and Boot. 
Love pigeon. it. <laughs> They're so stupid. Pigeon is a bard. They're so dumb, and I love them so much. I know, I know. Your pigeon, I your boot? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. I want to see this. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, I'm game. Uh, yeah. Rachel, before you chose to be the creepiest of all uh, clerics of Saren Ray, <laughs> yeah. did anything else pique your interest, class wise? Um, yeah, funny enough, I've always loved clerics. They're always my first choice because I think there's such a wide variety in them. Um, and I like to heal people. I like to be important to the party. But I really, I kind of wanted to be a barbarian because I want to do that damage. I yeah. want to roll the sweet, sweet dice. <laughs> yeah. a, a trillion crits in a row is yeah. like, oh I, I want to be the, God. the crits. Oh my God. I feel great. The crits, in a row. <laughs> the crits feel great. But on the other end, when you don't land a hit, you just feel the the utter mm -hmm. pressure of I have failed everyone <laughs> with the one thing that I can do. It's not it, your fault. It's, it's the a dice. pendulum. I know, it's but it's a pendulum. It's a high reward, but but then you got oh, those four crits heavy. in a row. It just rolled one after the other. That's mm -hmm. oh that sweet victory. I just like to I picture so omelets. Spinning with like the axe, <laughs> as like the main source of momentum, <laughs> and just keep zombies yeah. flying, yeah. and just three Tasmanian devil. Yeah, exactly. Totally. Just I, I just in remembered and... the moment after the impaling from the Minotaur, where you were trying oh. to hold your wounds and also run with the axe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy, like you're, yeah. you're, you're last. <laughs> <laughs> um, were any other classes that interested you before you, uh, you, you you settled on champion? You know what? Um, this is such. I'm still a, very new at, at RPGs and especially a game um, of this level. I guess you know this was uh, such a. And we you know we spoke about this. We yeah. spoke about mm -hmm. this. And um, you know obviously we've played games together, mm -hmm. but nothing nothing like this. And it was just uh, it was such an experience for me just to join all of you who are so incredibly talented and so like um i'm just skilled in this in this in this work in this world and and um it, doing it was just amazing and I, and I remember it was like when i spoke with jason about it, i'm like what can i do that's going to serve the party that's not going to you know be inhibiting anyone else because they're all so experienced in this. And I don't want to be like newbie at the table, like, what the hell am I doing? You know, they're like, what can I do that's going to be fun? And also for me to learn, you know, with everyone else. And um, I had, you know, spoken to some people in the communities. Thank you very much about, um, you know, specific D&D &D characters and stuff like that. And, you know, you and I spoke about paladins and, you know, the champion being so close to that. And I was like... Well, that all sounds cool. And then I like to smash stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> and if I can do that, I don't really, I'm not any interested in casting any spells right now. You know, like I know I'm, I'm not mentally there, but I can, I know I can swing something. I know I can like bash something. So yeah, this sounds great. Yeah. And it was just that. I was just exploring uh, what that means, what, what a champion is and how that's going to work with everyone else at the table. And, you know, Jason helped me out so much um, prior to us playing the game, and I'm just so excited to to learn and like play this and keep going because yeah. it's an amazing experience for me. Well, and so from the character generation angle, mm -hmm. I I didn't specifically ask the group to make their characters together. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of did that on purpose for a couple reasons. One, um, from a kind of building the narrative perspective, I knew that we were going to sit down at the table and none of you were going to have the opportunity to have played together before. So I wanted to make sure that your characters didn't actually know one another. So you didn't know what everyone else was capable mm -hmm. of. You didn't know how the pieces fit together yet. I wanted that feeling to kind of come through in those first moments because you've just been signed up for the army and now you have to go serve mm -hmm. but you don't know each other and and you don't know what you're capable of and and so i was like well i might as well just make that natural and not have everyone sit in the same room and make characters together because you might build something that was too cohesive and mm -hmm. feel too planned so th it was kind of intentional um to be like the only thing i wanted to make sure is that we weren't having doubling up so if, if one person wanted to play a champion i was like somebody else play something else uh, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure we had a mix but I, I was less concerned about like oh gotta make sure we have a wizard mm. and a cleric and mm -hmm. a fighter and a rogue right 
that isn't the group we built. As a matter of fact, that's why we ended up with three half elves in the group. Surprise! <laughs> yeah. Three half elves. Um, and, One surprise. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 Major surprise. And, 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 a, and a dwarf and, and a halfling. And, and we didn't end up with a goblin, although I think it would have been hilariously funny <laughs> yeah. if all of you had decided to make goblins independently. I yeah. just would have let that roll. I would have just been like, yeah, <laughs> all right. Yeah. 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 Basically, a goblin already. Goblin party. Yeah. Yeah. All, All goblins and Linnaeus. All goblins and Linnaeus. Yeah. Uh, well, our is. next question from chat here is how long did it take to prep this campaign? Um, we'll start on the uh, Jason Bullman side of this, and then I'll start getting to uh, to the cast and how all that went down. Um, um, how long did it take to build this story? I would friend? say from the moment that we agreed, you know, hey, let's do this thing to, to let's script it out. Um, I think my total writing time was about six weeks. Um, that wasn't six weeks of me doing it as my full-time job. I, <laughs> I, uh, I uh, run the team that makes all of our games uh, happen at the company. So, uh, you know, I'm in team meetings and all this other stuff. So I, I mostly wrote it on weekends and at nights. Mm -hmm. um, and it started out as just kind of a plot outline that was like, okay, these are, I think, what the pieces are. And then um, from that, I would take it and build it into the individual chapters. And I build all my scripts for something like this. Uh, I call it an accordion in that I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller based on how much time the, the you engage with it at the table. So if you really engage with one part, I'll just snip out the next part and move on to the part after that, making sure I hit the big plot beats and still get to where I need to go by the end of a three hour yeah. session. Cause I know I'm on a timer. If this were a home game, I'd just let you explore until you were done and then we'd move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. So um, it, it's different kind of planning and writing. Um, but I think ultimately like my scripts ended up being a list of plot beats, kind of upbeats and downbeats to kind of pull and draw tension. Um, and then, uh, but the, all of that was just the story narrative and where I thought it was going to go. And in a number of places, it turned into this big branching matrix of a plot line. Uh, and the big question mark I had when I finally wrapped all that up, I was like, great, I've got this 12,000 word outline <laughs> and I brought it down here with me. And, and I, I had talked to each one of you individually. I'd given you questionnaires about your characters and gotten some information from you. But all of that came together at the last minute. And I was like, OK, the thing I don't have about this is the personal connections, the this story of Iculus and your father, um, the, the, the mystery of Linnaeus's parentage, you know, all of those tales they they weren't part of the outline they uh, they had to come organically at the table based on how uh, all of you decided to explore them yeah so and let yeah. me say as a producer and a director of an rpg show your preparation is very appreciated <laughs> um, three weeks before we started filming i got hey here's the rough draft of my outline and it was like Wow, what a story. <laughs> and then also, I totally see how we're going to do this in the time that we have. Because yeah. like he said, the accordion aspect, and I just think that that's masterful mm -hmm. jamming. I, I, well, it was part it was part my traditional jamming style, which is here's a bunch of notes scratched down on a piece of paper. I don't know. I'll run with it. Um, and uh, it was a mix between that and script writing, where yeah. I understood the beats and the, the, the mm -hmm. plot pieces that I needed to make sure happened to yeah. make the story work. And then, I mean, I guess to sum up the rest of this question, where it's more talking about the character, the character <laughs> builds and the players working on their characters in a nutshell i think we can kind of all sum this up together it was a bit nuts because when, yeah. we, when we were prepping for this it was a very very busy time yeah mm -hmm. um comic-con was happening um D, D in a castle yep. was happening yeah. so yep. there were people even out of the country mm -hmm. and a lot of this that just happened in yeah. in conversations <laughs> yeah. between Everybody. people remotely working with each other jason working with everybody with based off of wherever they were in the world. and Yeah, we were prepping for Gen Con internally too. Yeah. And, 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 and and I do have to give credit, right? This isn't this wasn't just me internally at Paizo either. Uh, I have a, an entire team of folks. I, I have uh, you know a lore master that I grabbed a lot of time from and was just like, okay, I'm doing this, 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 this. Am I messing up the plot of our world at all yeah. by doing this? And I was kind of playing it safe by playing mm. in the backyard of Crypt of the Everflame. Yeah. And th this may not be something that everyone knows, but Crypt of the Everflame was the first Pathfinder first edition standalone adventure that was ever written, and I wrote it 10 years ago. Wow. And it tells the story. Oh, so cool. It, it tells it. the story <laughs> of a bunch of kids being sent to this dungeon to retrieve the Everflame, which is just the fire. And they never know it's a sword. That That's never even revealed in the module because I didn't know it was a sword in the module. At that <laughs> time. And, so, so, and it's all about them arriving and finding out everything's gone terribly wrong and the undead have risen in this crypt. So it like that story was an adventure that happened 10 years ago. So wow. I was playing in the background of that. 
Um, all right, this is an interesting one. Um, who has the best evil laugh at the table? <laughs> let's let's try. We got a bunch of performers here. Let's let's, let's do a go around. Me or or, 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 or we or should Aki? Aki go first. Oh yeah, Aki, you wanna you wanna give us a, a evil laugh? Oh goodness. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we even need to compete? <laughs> That's pretty good. That was, so that was good. good. That was pretty good. I'm going to say that that answered the question. Yeah. I don't think anybody else is going to do better than that. No. Aki has the best evil laugh. Yep. <laughs> I know it's not me. Mine is well. derpy. <laughs> <laughs> Ago. Oh, this we is like a another game. Yeah, we did our best <laughs> evil laugh. <laughs> That's great. It was. It just starts low because. <laughs> 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 That's yeah. real good. I like it. You're welcome, audience. Yeah, you're welcome. welcome. You make the most ridiculous face. It's, it's a little close to you. Right. Yeah, they yeah. went but for it. You guys want to go for it? Like, oh, I'm rich. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like Dracula. Yeah. A little bit, maybe. All right, Erica's going to give us a laugh. I have to, like, I have to get into it. <laughs> that's oh, that's that was creepy. That's, that's like an evil oh. giggle. <laughs> I, yeah, geez. I can't believe that came from Erica. Like, <laughs> From the depths. Yeah, Just the depths. In. <laughs> Rachel. Oh, God. <clears throat> Mine's probably going to be gross. Oh, I'm ready. Every time I think of like a villain or something, I think of Meg Mucklebones from Legend. She's like <laughs> oh. the most disgusting, hunched over swamp hag. The like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my very body <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's my vibe. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> Uh, this next question is actually something that I've been meaning to ask Jason for all of the months that we have become friends and colleagues, and sure. I've yet to ask it. Uh -huh. What What are your favorite um, additions, changes to two E? What are like from from one E to two E? What are the your your favorite? Uh, you know, so we, you know, we spent three years making the game, and and throughout that point in time, the one thing that always uh, came back to me so strongly um, was that. The way that the game is built, the way that we structured three action to, to, to your turn, the way reactions play into that, the way uh, character abilities are all plugged into all of that makes the whole game really very narrative. Um, uh, like, I, I mean, I've always done a lot of that, but I find it so much easier to do when you say, okay, I draw my sword, I move up and I attack. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, you just described your action, but in fact, I can now easily just parse that into one, two, three, we're done. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it really allows everyone at the table to not necessarily have to break character by being like, oh, wait, and none of you experienced this, was like, oh, is that a move action or was that my standard? Wait, no, I want to spend both those and take a full round action, but I still get a swift, but not if I spent my immediate between this turn and the previous turn, and I still get an attack of opportunity and a free action. I can still do a talk, and there's a couple non-actions <laughs> You well. lost me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I lost everyone. And, 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 and the entire system was built around this incredibly robust, action system. And it was fun. It was fun to play with and it was fun to find the angles and the places where you could dig into it and have a good time with it. But it was really intimidating for new players. And it's really intimidating to explain to people on a stream. Mm. That's like, oh, what are you doing? Well, I'm taking six different action types on my turn. And then somebody would go, wait, no, that one's a move and you can't take two of those. And all of a sudden we have to have a debate. I don't have to mm -hmm. do that anymore. Oh, you want to move twice? Great. You want to attack? Great. We're, we're done. Let's move on. <laughs> um, it, it, it just allows the story to flow smoother. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think ultimately a game's job is to facilitate everybody getting together and playing and, and sharing in a tale and a story. And if the game isn't doing that, then it needs to get out of the way to let people do that. Mm -hmm. And my job is to write rules, but I want to write those rules so that you remember them and then push them out of the way so that you and your friends can tell a story together. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's what's important. <clears throat> That's Ideally, why you it just do it. becomes second yeah. nature. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're just living in the rules. Yeah. You're not having to and, you know, and, think and, about them. And yet. that's why you do it. You don't want to sit there and get bogged down on what the number is. You yeah. know, I mean, you want to have it. You want it to feel like it's evocative of what your character is supposed to be. But fundamentally, you want it to get out of the damn way so that you yeah. can just tell the story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Next question. Um, so, uh, by the way, can you start bolding these, Devin? My eyes are just going out. 
So I think my mom's probably watching the stream right now. I gotta get my eyes checked, mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. For all the players, what was the one thing about your character that locked in your concept for how you portray them? Let's start with Aki. Funnily enough, for me, it was uh, Lisan's name because um, I didn't really know what kind of character they were, who I wanted them to be until I named them. And then I was like, Lisan sounds like they would have this ridiculous accent. And I, I was in the shower one day, just sort of like, what what does Lisan sound like? And I was like, Lisan Shaw Buckle sounds like somebody who would have this kind of accent. And that's kind of sort of locked in this sort of personality that's very jovial, kind of flirtatious, um, definitely has no chill. Um, and that was, that was where it really started for me. It was like when, when they finally got a name that kind of cascaded into a bunch of other things. Is, is that pretty standard for, for most of your prep, the way you build most of your characters? I want to say I, I, I name characters fairly quickly. Some people wait forever, basically until like the last minute to name people. I name like my characters almost right away. Um, I remember with Liss, um, it happened somewhere in the middle and, uh, but, um, for me, yeah, I, I think names do tend to do a lot to influence how that character is going to turn out in the long run for a few of the characters that I've made lately. That's definitely been the case. Awesome. Um, Gina, mm. I have, I have a similar, my, my name very clearly. Um, <laughs> I, I knew that I, perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mainly the thing that stuck with me the most was that, uh, in terms of just how I played them, I knew that I didn't want to play someone who's very angry. I didn't want to, because I feel like uh, the trope of a barbarian is that they're really de like hurt and angry and they just want to cause um, destruction around them. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to play a character that wanted to hurt and and maim and, and, and all of this stuff. I wanted them to be happy and have a family that supported them and, and be sort of um, <laughs> uncharacteristically happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so this the 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 concept of the spirit rage was just so strong to me of just the the fact that they are being puppeted by their ancestors and it doesn't have to be this this sort of rah, 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 rah kind of rage. Mm. I mean, it still kind of is, but um, but that's just the fun part. Yeah. Um, so so that definitely was what what stuck with me the most was that it 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 was coming from a place of of family honor and 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 goodness and kindness and 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 being supported rather than it stemming from revenge or or anger yeah jeremy um i would say it was the art really um when i f like found the art that i wanted to use for aculus it was like oh that's a story mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. you know and i just was like you know what can i do that's really going to serve that and um you know, choosing what I chose with choosing Shellen to be the deity, um, which was so different from, you know, like we discussed, what like a typical like fighter warrior type character is going to, you know, choose that. That's not the deity, you know, usually. Yeah, she's all about she's all love, love art, art and, and yeah. beauty and all these wonderful things. And here <laughs> I am, this killer, you know, with the bastard sword. Yeah. And but um, so I was like that there's so much that I can use from there for the backstory and, you know, being someone who, obviously, like I said, doesn't have much experience playing these these games, and uh, I wanted, I was like, well, I know, I, I love storytelling. You know, I love creating characters. It's what I do for my job. Yeah. So um, I was like, I have to get really deep with this because that's the only way that I'm going to be able to play this organically and be yeah. natural and, and make it real for me. And uh, you know it, that the mask and. You know, obviously, if you all saw the episode, we're going to spoil it because I take the mask off. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got new what? mask what? art, which is yeah. incredible. The art is so cool. You guys are amazing for turning it around so fast. But, um, yeah, so that was that was it. Yeah, shout out to the phenomenal artist mm. that Kaizo works mm -hmm. with. Just yeah. uh, it, it, incredible, incredible stuff. And, and we did a nice little rust job on that to mm -hmm. make sure we got that in the finale. So. He looks really good. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we, <laughs> kept, we kept that a secret from everyone. Yeah. yeah. No, no one on cast knew no until that aired. In today. fact, yeah. when I go, I, I'm like, I have to go make a phone call. We're all sitting in in the conference room watching the stream, and uh, 
they're like, oh, you should be back in eight minutes. I'm like, that's really specific. <laughs> <laughs> Eight minutes? Just be back in eight minutes. I'm like, oh. Chris, Chris was getting nervous. He was like, where, where is Jeremy? <laughs> where is Jeremy? And then I come back, and within like a minute and a half of, of that monologue that I'm given, you know, it's like, I was like, whoa. I'm that. like at 31 minutes and 37 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> this art's going to come up, and Jeremy's going to see it. It's, it was um, so awesome. Uh, <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Sorry, I, I took a little uh, tour there. Anyways. Um, creating... Creating Linnaeus, that, yeah. Uh, I really like, like Gina, I like making characters that seem like maybe these all these components shouldn't go together, but they do. They really complement each other in the end just because, you know, a lot of things work well together. Yeah. Diversity. And I, <laughs> I kind of combined the concepts of Meg Mucklebones from Legend and the, the elves in Hellboy, and I just kind of smushed them together, and there was Linnaeus. Uh, I love. <laughs> <laughs> and there was, and, there, and there's Linnaeus. Oh, and it's history now. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's that it's that juxtaposition between something very beautiful being really weird, really weird. Uh, and they also didn't tell me before making these characters that um, they were going to be canon. So now the weirdest character I've ever made, and all of her Beatles, even Dio, <laughs> even Elton, are. Uh, Erica. <laughs> the world will know. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, well, I was trying to figure out why, like, a bard would want to join the military. And basically, what came to mind was that a bard wouldn't want to join the military. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so with Tariel, she has, like, this very, like, noble background. Um, and she was just kind of, like shoved into it by her parents and someone was like oh so you made a trust fund kid <laughs> and I was like yes that's exactly what she is that's so awesome. that's where her sort of haughtiness comes from <laughs> that's awesome that as for of- me my character came from when I opened up the monster book and found undead <laughs> yeah. and I'm putting all of those in the campaign oh, wow these are mine that was my character yes Yes. Well, and I, I, I knew, I, I felt like I knew the villain the moment you shared, you showed me vampire and Lazard as well. Yeah. The, yeah, like, yeah. Floating oh. vampire. Oh. Dude. Uh, so good. Um, this, this is a good question. Um, for the players, um, was there anything about your character that sur- that surprised you or that you discovered while at the table? Yeah. Are we starting with me again? Yeah. Let's start with Aki. Okay. Um, while I. I mentioned earlier before that I thought that Linnaeus was pretty flirtatious. I didn't realize how flirtatious they were until I got to the table. And that really surprised me. I did not expect (laughs) them to be like so cuddly um, or to like be so familiar and friendly with people right away. And I definitely didn't anticipate them being as charismatic as they were. Um, I I certainly, uh, especially sitting right next to a bar, did not expect to be the one who was like, you know, rallying the troops and like, going after my friends to be like, you're great, you should learn to take compliments, that kind of stuff like that was nothing at all like what I was anticipating with Liz. Um, I, I definitely expected somebody a little bit more, uh, I don't want to give away too much because there's still so much of their backstory that hasn't been revealed, but there was there was a different vibe for them that I was expecting. Fair enough, yeah, mm-hmm. well, sweet. Um, let's go around this way, Erica. Oh, um, well I kind of had the opposite experience. I wrote Tariel to be very flirtatious. <laughs> and then I don't think she flirted with anyone the entire time. We're not One retired. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I, was try- I was trying to find some. You were a little busy trying to save all I these guess, people. Just There's always a fight. Find, find out the Lord of Undead. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really, like skeletons. None of the zombies <laughs> caught your eye. Yeah. Fine. Uh, <laughs> no. Lucky? <laughs> no. <laughs> How dare you say that? Lucky is no one. I accept Satan. <laughs> just wait, Lucky. Just Satan's, <laughs> Satan's type. Lucky hey. is Satan's type. Hey, come on. Plenty of time. Get out. <laughs> the lucky performance. Oh, I man. Love it. Hey, yeah. I just see that little halfling in that red coat every time I hear that voice. Oh. I have to be real careful not to make him too like New Jersey. Yeah. yeah no, I, have to, I have to be real careful on that. That's, I get real close every time and I'm like, back off, back off. Yeah. Are you Rachel? could lean into it. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Halflings could be New Jersey. You never know. <laughs> uh, things that surprised me about the character. Uh, honestly, I knew her pretty well going into this. Um, 
I think maybe what surprised me was that her voice started to go very Alice in Alice in Wonderland, which gave her this very weird innocence that I I picked up on and then just kind of ran with it. She's so... I, I actually made up a couple of things on the spot, like the fact that she doesn't know what she looks like because she grew up in a monastery where they don't have mirrors because Saren Ray would not be like, be vain, go look at yourself and dress in finery. Um, so figuring out like how exactly how sheltered she was and then how innocent that kept her mm. essentially mm-hmm. yeah. while still having all of this weird knowledge about all this dark stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh. Jeremy. <laughs> um, I don't think I really <clears throat> thought about like how mysterious I wanted Iculus to be. And then like it ended up just sort of playing into it. Um, it's usually, I mean, as you all know, I'm pretty happy dude i'm always like you know pretty personable but iculus is very like especially in like you know Mm -hmm. before he gets in it with you guys it's just very cold before the alcohol before yeah before the before the little sip through the (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah so i didn't really expect it to be uh him to be the like that just standoffish i guess at first but then i just sort of as it played i'm like well this sort of makes sense so i'm just gonna ri- yeah. ride with it and um yeah oh oh gina ah uh, i'm trying to think if there's anything i discovered mm. well it was more so like i had completely built my character entirely around this absolute joy Going to last wall. Mm. Spoiler alert. That's gone. (laughs) Um, So I think I was mainly surprised at how happy she was after that was gone. Maybe she's in denial. She's probably in denial. Um, But but yeah, I mean, I I knew she was going to be happy. I knew she was going to be really personable and just want to take in as much of all of you as possible because this was her first time meeting her new family and being around the people she believed she was going to be with until she retired. Um, and uh, she probably didn't expect to be, like, dancing with her fellow knights mm-hmm. and, like, commenting on their thighs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and having wonderful undertable drunken cry fest with oh, you yes. and, and, and just small things like that that I think were just, like, Wow, she's just kind of all over the place. She doesn't know anything about the world. She's just going to have fun. Well, innocent I, babies. I thought that yeah. was really great. The, the only thing I asked every player to bring to the table was, why were you sent to Last Wall to serve in the army? That was the one question I needed everyone to answer because that was the initial hook. Mm-hmm. I didn't want you to meet in a bar, or get a job from a wizard or anything cliche like that. <laughs> it was like, nope, you've been conscripted to be in the army. Mm-hmm. But I knew, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, this ain't gonna last. Uh, but <laughs> but the thing that I thought was really funny is that Omelet was the only character who was actually excited for it. <laughs> but everybody else was kind of like, eh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll do this. Right, you all had different reasons. Mm-hmm. But Omelet was the one that was like, I'm a true believer. Let's go stand over the crypt of a long dead lich. That's going to be fun. I want to do that for my whole life. Oh, and, uh, you know, not everybody else was. And, I, of course, I, that's why that was the initial reason why Lucky was put in the party. Because I, I didn't know whether or not y- you all were going to be excited. So I put Lucky in to be the foil who was the one who was really not interested in being there. Who was like, yeah, no, I'm not interested. I'll be gone soon enough. Right? Yeah. You know, just like, he's not he's not here for that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it was really fascinating watching that develop because I had no idea how that would play mm-hmm. out. You know, you can only kind of just put the pieces on the table and let everybody play with them. Sure. So. I, I love this next question and the way it's worded. Who is your favorite NPC and why is it your friendly neighborhood goblin pirate? Uh, so people love Private. Gelby. Private, <laughs> Private goblin. Gelby. Yeah. Gelby. Uh, Gelby. Yes. Um, <laughs> Gelby is love certainly Gelby. beloved. Let's talk about some of our favorite NPCs because there's so freaking many of them. Mm-hmm. I'm going to shout out Colvin mm-hmm. right out the gate. Mm-hmm. Everybody, very, love, yeah. how could you not? Yeah. How could you not love Colvin? Um, but yeah, no, that, that, oh, uh, that, that owl. You are, you are <laughs> an NPC wizard my friend i i you know well so like mm-hmm. i he was a pc but i actually loved i loved i loved eric playing whole gas i mean yeah. I, we knew he was only going to be in the the show for for two episodes so we knew he was only in there for a limited period of time so he was really he was a player character for a bit 
Yeah. Um, yeah. But I thought he did a great job too. So oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That. Yeah. 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 yeah and, and let me just say, Eric had gotten off a flight at like 11 p.m. from the UK the night before, had zero time to prepare for this. Yeah. I went into the hair and makeup room and said, this is your character bat. This is the, this is what whole gas is about. And then he pulled. I, it off I like wrote that. him some notes mm-hmm. on a piece of scratch paper. Yeah. I was like, here's your character. This is yeah. what you're playing. Good luck. Old forgetful yeah. wizard. Yeah. And just not knock it out of the park, Eric. Because <laughs> he's Eric. Brilliant. Of course he did. Yeah. Of that's, course. That's like second nature to him. Yeah. yeah. It's so easy. Absolutely so brilliant. Absolutely. Um, Devin, we got another one uh, to, to scroll up to here. Uh, <laughs> do any of you have any questions for each other here at the table? Uh, for each other? For Jason, um, maybe. Aki has a question. Aki has a question. What's up, Aki? Yeah. Uh, my question is kind of for Chris and for Jason. Since um, Iculus got updated art, what's the chances that the rest of us will get updated art? <laughs> uh, Great I'm, question. I'm happy to answer that. Uh, as soon as I get back to the office, I'm going to order art for all of you. Yeah. <gasps> it's yeah. it's yeah. happening. Yeah, we're going, to, we're going to get new art for all of the characters. This um, is that's so, beautiful. So a little, <laughs> little bit of a secret. We decided When we decided to do this, it was such short notice that um, the the best way we had to get character art for you was to pick from art from a previous book that we had done with a bunch of characters who had never been assigned to an actual personality. They were just kind of archetypical characters. So all of those characters came from that source or from an adjacent source. And as a result, not all of the art perfectly matched what you actually wanted the character to be. So there was a little bit of mismatch here and there. So I think what we're going to do for season two is we're going to order new art for all of you. I I don't think we'll drastically be changing any of the characters, but we'll allow you to customize out your loadout and make them a bit more you. So uh, th- this is a surprise to them. I didn't tell them this no. before we started, uh, but I'm going to be ordering new art yeah. for all of you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Aki's very happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, which characters, PC or NPC, do you... What does that say? Ship. 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 Yes. Oh, oh, I don't know. Everyone. <laughs> All of, yeah. all, all, all of yeah, them. Yeah, we'll, we'll start with Aki. Do you have anything to say? I actually have a, a an OT3, um, <laughs> and it's Linnaeus, Iculus, and Omelette. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah! Sunshine Squad! Yeah, Sunshine Squad! I have ship the three of them. No, it's all of us. It is? Because uh-huh. you're, you're an Omelette. You're sunny side up. Oh, my God. Oh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Sunshine Squad, love it. I will yep. say that my That's the ship name. my favorite NPC that you know because I don't I know we didn't all answer that question but was the Father Prass oh. connection that that oh. we had and I think mm-hmm. that was yeah. such a fun. Oh. Um, I, I actually had Father Prast ended up being such an amazingly important character, mm-hmm. and I had no idea going into it that he was even going to be part of it. Yeah. Well, two like, religious types in the party. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to find a father and be like, "Listen." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the, there had been there had been the there had been the priest that you dragged with you from Everstand, but it, you know, he never clicked with everyone the same way Prast did. Prast just mm-hmm. clicked, yeah. and uh, and that character ended up being a lot more than I thought he was. That character was invented ten years ago. Almost all of the characters from Cassin. Are, are were invented like 10 years ago wow. for that module. Wow. And I just updated them and decided where they landed and what they were doing now. So I just so kind cool. of updated the module. He had some clutch heels too for an NPC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did okay. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah both of them did, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, this is a Jason question. Um, is there anything that you built into the campaign that we never really hit on that you can share without spoiling anything in the future? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, I obviously I don't want to spoil the upcoming plot for season two. Uh, I, I I do want to talk about it a little bit before the end. I want to give yeah. a little bit of a teaser, but Ooh. we'll save that for the yeah. end. Great. Um, so um, I, you know I think there were parts that I cut out, but the things that I cut out were usually the things that I knew I could lose. Like I was just like, okay, there was an extra wave of undead, for example, oh. in the fight. Uh, yeah, like you needed another yeah, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there was an good. extra wave of undead in the first <laughs> fight. Yeah. Um, in the uh, scene traveling south. Oh, you so, mean the werewolves? Yeah, the werewolves. There was the werewolves. So, but in that, in that Come part. Come help it friendly. Come yeah. help it friendly. It's fine. Come help it friendly. Yeah. Yeah, it worked out great. No, so that entire, that entire part of the adventure was actually a large oh matrix God. of encounters yeah. that were all sorts of different things. And, and had you stayed on the road, you could have stayed, had everyone stay at an old creepy farm oh, that no then thanks. like some of the undead outriders would have surrounded in oh. the fog and there would have been oh, no. like a big fight in the middle of a fog 
dog in some creepy rotting farm uh, with like uh, rotting gross pumpkins in the field. That was yum. a different encounter. So there was a bunch of there was a bunch of fun things like yeah. that. There was actually more encounters in the Stygian Spire oh. as well with the un, uh, with the drow, but. Um, you guys blazed. It, it, it took longer to get there because the Dryder fight took forever uh, because oh it was God. so hard. Mm -hmm. um, it just ended up being way harder than I thought it was going to yeah. be. So I just trimmed here and there. I, I wouldn't say any of it actually greatly impacted the plot. I, I, I love that. As soon as we got out of that episode, um, you, you pulled me aside and you were like, I shouldn't have put him on a narrow bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so freaked out falling yeah. and these giant things. I thought yeah. that was where we were going to die. Was it's like an hour and 40 tough. minute yeah. combat yeah. or something. Yeah. It was like a God, full God, half too. of it. Yeah, and, it was so, so, hard. so when you actually got to the drow at the end, there was n almost not enough time. So when the drow priestess was trying to escape, yeah. I was looking at our clock because we were over time at that point. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I need to get out of this fight right now. I was, And I looked at her spell list and I'm like, yes, invisibility. <laughs> and then you were like, Oh I no, prepares. I see a and I'm like, <laughs> Damn, I can't get out of this fight. <laughs> No, it's fine. No, we're talking. Was that the only time you prepared That's the, the invisibility? The only time I had my page oh, open to it just yeah. in case. I was she just so knew. worried about going down into that spire, especially like after that Dryder fight. I was like, oh, this is just the mini boss. We're going into the boss fight. This is going to be tough. This is where we die. So I prepared like the weirdest things the night before, thinking about where we were going, going underground, probably like the kinds of things we were probably going to run into. Mm -hmm. A little meta knowledge, sorry. But I prepared that. It was one of my weird ones that I, yeah. I was like, I'm never going to use this, but I'm going to have it just in case because it's always, it comes in in a clutch. And it did. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that was second. supposed to be a more challenging fight, but uh, to be honest, the party just was rolling 20s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? That was yeah, a crit right. fast. Crit rampage, And it was yeah. just like heads went flying left yeah. and right. So uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> somehow that's how the dice roll. And that yeah. drow priestess was no, uh, I mean. She was no slouch. Yeah, yeah no yeah, slouch. Yeah, 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 exactly. Sure. Um, all right. Uh, is there still are there still mysteries left to unfold for any of the PCs? Of course, there are uh, that oh, were yeah. created at the start. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Next so. question. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Answer is uh, mm -hmm. many many watch season two, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you will uh, you will get all of that goodness. Oh well, maybe. Yeah, or maybe we might get yeah. some of them. Yeah. Save mm -hmm. the rest for the next season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, speaking of so I, I, speaking of that that moment though, I just want to talk about. When I was sitting at Video Village, I just was so in awe of, of a choice, the choice that Rachel made in that moment where I was just like, this is a person that is not playing as a player. They are playing as Linnaeus. When it was just, I'm running for the sword. Oh, yeah. Like, door opens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Screw all these people. I don't care what's going to happen to me. I don't care what that black mass is. I'm going for the sword. There were there were there were, <laughs> there were there were there were moments there were moments throughout the series where I I realized so when when everybody first sat down at the table you were all players uh, some of you know each other but not everybody knew everybody at the table necessarily at the start mm -hmm. and and you know as a result we were getting ready and to get ready on a show like this you have to go through hair and makeup and you have to get everything ready to be camera ready and everything like that and we had some some off time and mostly folks were just on their phone and hanging out and just kind of chilling and taking it easy but not really chatting. I knew that I had all of you as a group. I knew I had you. Uh, when between, I think it was episode three and four, a bunch of you went to go have a meeting without me. <laughs> and they were like, no, we're talking. You're, you're not, you're, you were playing without me. And I was like, I was like, super quiet. And all of a sudden, every, every, every time I'd come up during lunch or something, I'd sit down and all of a sudden everybody would be real quiet and just kind of stare like, away and like, oh, table. he's here. <laughs> And I wasn't that sure if I had just made everyone angry, and then I realized, <laughs> no. I realized, oh no, they're just plotting. Yeah. Yeah. They're just plotting, as you do. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, you, yeah. you, 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 you know. That, that, was, that was the moment where I went and sat down at a different table. I was just like, I got him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, amazing. this is an interesting question that Jason and I are going to be lost on words for. Um, do the cast have backup characters? Are they allowed back at the table in case of a character death? <laughs> It feels well, like a personal I'll, attack. I'll, uh, I'll, it feels very... I'll let them like, answer oh, no. if they have backup oh, characters no. in mind, but I will say this. This isn't like uh, this isn't like uh, that old chick track Darkest Dungeon where if you died, it's like, you're oh. gone! Yeah. Leave the table, you are dead to us. Yeah. No, no, no. I yeah. mean, if someone dies, you know, um, first of all, we'll all have a big cry <laughs> session because it'll be the first dies. time any of you have actually died in a role-playing game before. Um, no but then, uh, you know, we'll... we'll, we'll, we'll uh, 
we'll let you roll a new character, I guess. Aki, I what do you think about that? Yeah, we, we haven't really talked about it yet. Aki. Well, I don't currently have a backup character, but I guess I'd better start thinking about one. <laughs> 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 we heard him at the beginning of this talking about we're putting things in his head about <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. what other character would you play what other class goblin yeah, yeah exactly uh, goblin. exactly goblin all of our back of my characters are we goblins. all die one by one if, if someone, <laughs> everyone come back as a goblin please the, the first person who dies gets to play Gelby <gasps> wait but, but that would be fun but Gelby that would be great. <laughs> be like possessive. Are we making like official decisions right no, now? No, I know. I, I feel like I need more time I, I, to I just, assess uh, these. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I can't lose my sword, and I also took Die Hard. So please uh. no. Please no. You die last. I gotcha. want my sword. Okay, I, yeah, no, that's fine. Gotcha, yeah. As long as I like die holding my sword, that's fine. Uh, cool. Question for Jason: Did you make any on the fly changes uh, on the fly changes to any stat blocks uh, for the foes? Sure. Um, so uh, not all of the stat blocks were, as you saw, presented in the best area. There was a number of them uh, throughout the adventure where I kitbashed the stat block on the fly, or I had notes changing it to a different kind of monster. Um, I, as a GM, I would tweak and adjust to make it a better fit for the encounter and the pacing for where I needed it to be. Mm. Right. So, for example, the um, the honor guard there at the end, where it was for what were the stat blocks of mummies? Mm. Um, they were not quite the stat blocks of mummies because four of those would have been too powerful, followed up by and live mm. would have been a mess. It would have it would have mm. done what's called the TPK, mm -hmm. a total party kill, and we we wouldn't have wanted that. So they were weaker <clears throat> versions, but they still had a lot of the same effects and abilities. Mm. So uh, yeah, I I do I do adjust things. I I try and play it fair. You know, the dice land where the dice land, um, which is why there were so many crits. Uh, throughout the adventure, because um, that dice that I have of the red zircon dice, those things are murderous. But um, yeah. but mm -hmm. you know uh, the yeah. the once I change a monster, <laughs> I I set on it, and that's what it stays. Now, yeah, you adjusted the, the stat block. You never did it on the fly. Like the, this thing's gonna kill him, so I'm gonna reduce their stats. No, no, yeah, no, that, no, that never no, happened. No, 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 no. <laughs> if, if a monster was too hard and it was killing somebody, they better kill it fast, otherwise somebody's gonna die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. There you go. <laughs> FYI. I don't like hearing you say those words. So we're all rolling new characters tonight. Mm -hmm. um, anxiety. This is a good question, and I think that this can go two different directions here. So just what was your favorite character moment, moments of the series? Um, I think I'd like to hear from everybody, but, like, what is your favorite character moment for your own character, but also just that somebody that, that happened at the table? You know what I mean? Um, so you have the just favorite. They should do. They should do theirs mm. first. That way, they don't steal one from somebody else. Sure, sure, say, sure. Yeah. Well, let's let's start with Aki. Okay. Um, first moment that I for sure like that for me was really important um, was actually I want to say a, a conversation that I had with um, a former male, uh, the former the former mayor, um, where we were just talking about we were I was hanging outside Arnama's house. And, um, mm. he was fixing a shirt and it was just a conversation about how, like, the only reason why we had managed to like, make any headway in the, in the village is because he believed in us. And mm -hmm. I, I think that that was a theme that sort of carried through the whole story for Lisan, this idea that like the only, um, the only time that like real, real progress can be made is when we believe in each other, um, and that that that's like that's something that like Liz held on to. And then my favorite moment for um, another character, just in general at the table, um, I want to say it was I want to say it was the drunken party cry, but it was actually um, it was actually the moment that um, Iculus started talking about his father. I I was sobbing through that entire scene. I don't know who could see it or who could tell, but I was just wrecked, so wrecked. <laughs> I agree with uh, all of or with both of those <laughs> thoughts. Um, uh, Gina, um, for for RPs, uh, for myself, I think I was itching to finally get to like have an interaction with my the stone because I'd been hinting at it for so long, and uh, Aki's character especially was like, "What is this thing? <laughs> that you, why do you keep? What is this thing? Why do you keep talking to yourself?" Um, and so I. I 
was just so excited to finally get to have that scene. Honorable mention, the bunch of crits I had was oh. really fun. <laughs> so good. So good. Um, and then, are we doing our other people? Let's let's just we'll we'll, we'll do a second round for other okay, people. Cool. Yeah, uh, Jeremy, your your favorite Nicholas <laughs> moment. Oh. Uh, I agree with Aki. I mean, I uh, it, it it was. I think that the whole season was leading, was building for yeah. that moment for for me as as playing Iculus for that character. It was just uh, like I felt like it was he was finally starting to feel you know connected to everyone, and even me as the player was feeling connected to everyone. Yeah, you know more and more as the season went on, and then so. Uh, the character definitely felt that way, and and uh, I think that that moment really was me finally feeling like, okay, now I'm. These are. This is. I feel like I can be here, and they, I they are worthy of knowing this. You know, they can. Yeah. I know that they're loyal to 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 me. They're not going to hurt me. They're not going to. You know, I was like the most vulnerable moment that that Iculus had the whole the whole show the yeah. season. So. Um, you know, to, to really do that, to reveal that was, it wasn't just revealing like a mask, it was like, or pulling a mask off. It was like shedding all those years of of holding himself back. Yeah. You know, and that to me was, yeah. And embracing a newfound and family at the exactly. same time, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Rachel. Uh, I, this is tough. We had a lot of, everyone had a lot of really, really good moments. Uh, mm -hmm. I really liked, so the specifically scene, Linnaeus. Specifically me. I really liked the scene that Linnaeus and Nicholas had in the church. That was mm -hmm. role, That was a good bonding moment for those two characters. Absolutely. But I think my favorite is grabbing the sword because mm -hmm. Rachel is very loot motivated, but <laughs> it was also like, it's true. Uh, but it was also like the most defining, it was just such a, this is what, this is exactly what Linnaeus would do. She's. Mm -hmm. In any other circumstance, she's gonna be there for her friends. She's gonna be in the back going, okay, my first thing that I'm gonna do is heal someone as soon as they're down. I'm ready to just pop off cures. Uh, but this was, it's its such a, a like a relic of Saren Ray that's so big. Yeah. It was such a, a big thought in her mind. It was like already holding the burning sword and going this, I need this. This mm -hmm. is important to be retrieved, not in these evil hands. It was just, that was the one thing that was gonna stop her from doing her clerical duties was getting this sword. It was just, that's what she would do. There was yeah. no question in my mind. Yeah. And I think that reads. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, Erica. So, I have two favorite moments, if that's allowed. <laughs> yes. Um, the, uh, the, the, the touching moment was when um, my favorite thing was um, Tariel getting to put on the party mm. and the sort mm -hmm. of um, memorial celebration um but then the other part of me my favorite part was having comprehended languages but not being able to <laughs> respond in that language <laughs> and oh, yes. I yes. love this <laughs> moment oh. you shouldn't say this word <laughs> and that was probably yeah. The best. I, I also loved. Can I, I use performance? That. Great Lake River uh, water uh, thing. <laughs> so funny. There was, that, there was that moment where the drop priestess was talking to you and you couldn't respond and you were just like, mm. Mm. Oh, <laughs> and you just went like, I'm gonna come mm. pray with yeah. them. <laughs> I, and she's like, What are you doing here? And I was like, wah, wah. <laughs> That was the mental yeah. sound oh, that happened. Wow. So we'll move on from this question after I give Jason an opportunity to just sort of pick a moment that was one of your favorite moments. Um, oh man, there were so many. Uh, I, I think for me, you know, the, some of the most exciting moments are when things come together and the story reaches a crescendo to the point where everybody at home is like, whoa. And like, I, 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 I cataloged those moments so I could watch all of, all of you at home uh, you know, on Twitch, when those moments hit, just to watch the scroll of the Twitch feed turn into madness yeah. and insanity. So, like, there were two spots. One uh, was that moment where the headless horseman of private car 
comes marching in at the end of the episode oh. and flings oh, whole gas man. head oh, into the middle of the square. So it, it gives me it gives me goosebumps just remembering yeah. it. it and no, so the chat, because it's the very end of the episode, and I'm like, and his head goes spinning end over end, and that's where I'm ending today's adventure. <laughs> and just watching the chat go, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> for, for like for like two solid pages of just screaming um was was that's that's what I live for yeah. as an evil GM. That's the benevolence I bring sure. to the table. Sure. And, benevolence. And, and I, I think we got some of that tonight too when Andla appeared. You know, yeah. those moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but there was there was one more. I'm gonna I'm gonna indulge myself and say one more. And that was the moment when Erica earned a hero point. Oh gosh, the blood for point. Confirming the blood point. The crit <laughs> oh, yeah. on Iculus by reminding me that he was enlarged and oh, his AC was lower. Eric, I don't hide under the table this time. And, and <laughs> Hide in my head. This is sunk <laughs> under the table as I gave her a hero However, point. However, that it. hero point so did Erica. end up getting spent and saving the day at the end. Yeah, yeah. Like it did end up. The blood yeah, I did yeah. kill that giant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did end up. Did end up saving the day. That but, was that was the David yeah. and Goliath moment. Yeah. 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 There we go. So. Can we can we also just acknowledge the this that moment that you had with the stone and then oh gosh oh, the oh, on the stone and the oh, uh, <laughs> so cinematic oh, the way it was so described cinematic. i was like i'm watching this movie and i'm already pre-crying thinking yeah. about yeah. it it was so and, cool. and gina's so in the character yeah. and it was just such a oh that was so powerful and the Thanks. coverage when i was watching it live you i was just like after. Mm. you came over and you were like you blew on the rock mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, oh my like, god <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I just with the light, uh, way the lights hit it, and I'm I'm sitting oh next to her like, oh my god, did that just? Happen? Thank you very like, much. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember. I was like, I remember describing the stone as like this perfectly polished, <laughs> yeah. basically yeah. it's a mirror, yeah. and then holding up this jagged, <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> horrifyingly <laughs> rigid rock, and I was like. Yeah, this is what I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it was production value. Yeah. Some, no, sometimes you throw I, I reality out, out the window. <laughs> I found a rock on the property and was like, this is part of the story now. I'm going to have a rock. Well, and, and I love that you you do those things with your character. Like you also after like, you know, a major kill would add a braid. Like yeah. these are super subtle things that the audience might not pick up on. Mm -hmm. But I, like I added a braid and the giant's bracelet. The bracelet. Yeah. My hair. Yeah. Those little, those um, little you had touches. An actual bracelet. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did. That was the earring from the, the earring from yeah. the corpse giant. From the yeah. corpse giant. Yeah. yeah, I I really like adding elements to my physicality mm -hmm. uh, for my character. It helps me, and I think visually, it's just. Fun. I mean, we have yeah. it's a, we get to play a game, and it's a visual medium, and you all get to be a part of the story. So I like adding trinkets like that that make me feel like I, I'm going on this journey with the character. Yeah, you sure. know, I, I like dressing, even if it's just a little bit of cosplay of my mm -hmm. character. Yeah. It feels so much more for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, yeah. do you remember the first question I asked you via email? What? No. Are we gonna be in costume? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, needed and, to know. And, and and yeah, my answer was, oh, I I don't I haven't told everyone else we are, so no. Yeah. Uh, but I don't <laughs> well, know. Next we'll, I, I guess we'll see for season two. Yeah. We're gonna need to find you. No, we don't have to find you a mask anymore. You're good. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. no mask on. Oh, but, just need but, a, like a lot but, of armor. That really yeah. wouldn't have worked. No, for no, 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 no <laughs> cosplay on my shows. At least <laughs> I'm just a little weird about that. Mm. Yes. Um, but but still favorite moments. They have you you moments. mentioned it for a second, but those scenes with you in the church. That was. So I just uh, it was like. Hi. Well, and, and <laughs> the one on one, one, one with Father Crash <laughs> and Achilles oh was a beautiful oh. moment too. Oh. Yeah, yes. and, and he had a great moment with 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 Linnaeus as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought I after thought the dream or the nightmare rather. I loved that nightmare. Thank you. I want all the creepy nightmares. I love it. I love it. Any More creepy nightmares next no season, Jason. My, <laughs> my problem is that I really love when my characters get in some deep emotional shit. Mm. I, mm -hmm. sorry, stuff. <laughs> I curse too much. Uh, I, I love it. I love it because that's the that's the meaty. There's mm -hmm. no character that's just, oh, everything's totally fine. I yeah. love when things get dark and then they pull themselves out of it because it's always that yeah. message of hope somewhere in there absolutely at the end which, which which was kind of a recurring theme of the whole season yeah. was was the darkness coming for you and finding a way to find your way to the light mm -hmm. right so yeah, yeah it's fun um what aspect of your character would you like to see more of in the future since we're getting an s2 i'd say that's a fitting <clears throat> question um Ooh. let's go ahead and start with aki ah, always in the hot seat <laughs> um I think, I mean, obviously I haven't had a chance to talk to 
Jason yet about any of what's about to happen for Liz. Um, for me, I think um, I would love to see maybe a little bit more of um, uh, some connecting threads to their past in the in the following season, as far as like their family and where they come from, because it's, it's hinted at here and there, but not really con- like said explicitly where it is, like what their, like their, their childhood was like, um, with the exception of the fact that like Liz doesn't know their parents. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, uh, I love that family drama. I crave that family drama. Give me that family drama. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll be seeing a bit of that. Um, Noted. Noted. (laughs) Uh, Gina. Uh, You may have to skip me because I'm I'm trying to formulate what to say without it being like spoilers. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of what yeah. I want be careful about to that. Do yeah. And yeah, where this may be, this may be a, uh, ro- a rocky boat here. We might have to pass. Yeah, I think yeah. maybe we do. Things. Okay, here's here's a uh, just somebody trying to make sure that we're doing right by our community. <laughs> yeah. Rachel, did you ever return Eric's accidentally borrowed dice? Like quote unquote, quote unquote, accidentally, accidentally. borrowed. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> which one? Which one? Which one? This sounds very convincing. <laughs> the one you rolled here. Very, which one? very Just that one. Which one? Which one? Which one of no, that which one? How many do you have? <laughs> Eric, are you watching? <laughs> I honestly looked for who posted it because I was like, that's definitely Eric. Yeah. Is that? No. Can I have my dice back? I honestly yeah, don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I'm going to call my lawyer. Mm-hmm. Just kidding. Um, no, will, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will the character sheets be available? And if so, can we, uh, uh, so we can understand the characters better? That's something that Jason and I are in talks about. Yeah, um, we're figuring that out. Yeah. Uh, I do want uh, folk to be able to take a look at the characters and see what uh, everyone is playing. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been talking about that a lot uh, internally, and we want to figure out a way to do that in, in a place. So I have a sneaking suspicion where that'll be is uh, maybe a feature on our blog over at mm-hmm. Paizo or something. Thing like that. Yep. Um, yeah, but I'm dedicated to finding a way to get everyone to be able to see those characters. And I also may have some fun little side videos planned that'll give everybody a little bit more in depth of a look to mm. all of the characters as well. But we will be sharing more about that later. Um, yeah, a um, couple, <laughs> couple of little fun spots. Um, can we get a one shot, a one shot spinoff where the party just <laughs> what is that? Has fun in town. town. Yes, Ooh, has yes. fun in town. Beach day. Makeover episode. Episode nine. Makeover episode. <laughs> we party. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, <laughs> yes. Aki uh, says yes. Yeah. 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 I, well, so I, I think what's interesting, and 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 I, I don't want to jump the gun too much, but I'm going to move the storyline forward a bit uh, for season two, and I'm going to give a, a bit of a gap uh, between mm. the end of season one and the start of season mm. two. It's not season two is not going to start. The minute season one ended, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, it won't be too far off. But that does give kind of some interesting gap points that if we want to come back and revisit the story at a convention or something like that, we could do a live session that is just a different side fun adventure mm. that we could Neat. do at a show. Yeah, right. You know, which mm. could be a lot of fun, and yeah. uh, we'll see what kind of opportunities next year presents on that front. Yeah, um, I, I don't know where we're going, but we've been uh, chatting about it internally, and uh, we got a lot of fun conventions, and uh, maybe we'll see if we can get the cast together for some. Fun. Yep. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Like There's that. lots of maybes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe. Subtle. Subtle. Maybes. Maybe things are going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, question: What can you tell us about season two, Jason? So interestingly enough, this question was asked by Yoda Ate My Head, which is the, uh, <laughs> which, is the which is the Twitch name of Mark Morland, who is our brand manager at Paizo. Oh. Uh, who already, Hello, Paizo. Who already Hi. knows the plot oh. for season two because <laughs> I've, I've run it. Well, it's a <laughs> also, can we acknowledge how awesome Yoda ate my head is? Yeah, that's yeah. 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 Which, that's uh, great. Had that forever. Um, <laughs> so, what can I tell you about season two? Um, Nothing. Not much. <laughs> no. Uh, what, what I can tell you is that it's going to be set several months into the future. Uh, uh, that uh, our group uh, has found a lead. <gasps> that uh, puts them on the trail of one particularly treacherous halfling who has fled to the south and is hiding out in a town and is supposedly the head of a thieves' guild. 
Oh, we coming for you. Oh. That we was coming. way more I was expecting than to be shared. I was not well, expecting all that. That, that, is, that, is, that is what they know at the very beginning of the adventure. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not telling you anything that I wasn't going to tell you at the start of the adventure. Okay. Um, but uh, they don't know any of this. I told them none of this no. before we got started. <laughs> yeah. um, but they are, they are hot on the trail of one particularly treacherous halfling named Lucky. So can we start tomorrow? Yeah. 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 I want to see like, Omelette yeah. crush him. <laughs> Blood will rain. Yeah. Crush him. Yes. Uh, question, will season two be another eight episodes or will it be shorter or longer? It will be another eight episodes. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, same same format. Yep. We've been in talks um, about that whole thing, but yeah, yeah. it seems to work. That's it fits us nice and fine. Yep. Um, <laughs> is Lucky in season two? That's the next uh, question. It better uh, be. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll find out. I mean, maybe it's just better a wild be. goose chase, and they run around, and then Not they end long. up, you know. Depends on our perception. Yeah. We have <laughs> some profits in our chat right now, I yeah. think. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's, that's, that's Tim. That's, um, that's a good friend of mine. Hey, Tim. Uh, hey, Tim. <laughs> um, are we staying with theater of the mind or jumping to physical maps? I, I think we're going to stay theater of the mind. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, the one thing I've learned from running a show like this is that uh, showing a map in minis uh, can be an a lot of time spent moving things around and trying to tactically plan things. And when uh, folk are kind of down at the end of the tables, they can't reach the map. Yeah. It's just a challenge. Yeah. And I'd much rather just spend a, a more time describing a vibrant scene mm -hmm. than moving miniatures around. Yeah. I, I think that's a lot of fun. And if you can do it with your home group, I suggest doing it because the game's really built to take advantage of that. Yeah. But I also think I have a great group of imaginative folk and we can, we can still do a theater of the mind. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I feel the same way. Um, all right, uh, with the time gap, Ooh. will the PCs level up? Yeah, Jason and Arena level up. Mm. I don't know, we'll find out. Ah! Ah! Please. This, is, this is still a dialogue yeah. that we are having. Um, that was I, the first I, question I asked him. I, you know, right. I think I think the party got sixth level about two thirds of the way through, uh -huh. and then you yep. fought your way through to the end and, and, the villain, and, the big villain. and defeated the big villain. And that's worth, certainly worth a lot of XP, but I haven't crunched the numbers yet, so mm. we'll find out whether or not you've, okay. you got enough to get seven. Okay. Uh, will the, will the uh, Everflame as a item um, be statted up and published with the character sheets? Uh, Yes, uh, the I, I I think I think that's probably a good idea. I think we can get uh, uh, at least one version of the Everflame out there. Cool. One, one version. One version. Oh. Only oh. only oh. one party oh. can have it. Get ready to I battle. Get the most special one. I I I'm just gonna say that, and that's all I'm gonna say. Wait, what does that mean? Uh, this is like the Willy Wonka golden ticket thing that's going right. on right yeah, now. Kind of. Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah are you are you the party, the group, the home group that's lucky enough to get the Everflame? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have to, you have to bite into the sword. Most of them are chocolate, but one is golden. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't try but eating it. So. It's delicious. Yeah, my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good question to sort of start segueing, segueing our way out of here because we are going to be wrapping up here soon. Um, what other projects can we see you all on? Uh, ah. Let's let's start with Aki. What do you got going on right now? Um, I've got a couple of random things. Um, uh, I I show up every now and then over at Scabby Rooster doing total party kills. Um, and starting from next Tuesday, actually, I am going to be joining them for their kind of uh, in-between seasons uh, one-shot uh, for their LARPing show, Blank Slate, um, as one of the characters in that. It's like their 3.5 uh, season. And um, and then the Scion game that I'm over um, on, on Saving Throw show is on hiatus until 2020, but we are getting a season two. So yeah, those are the places that you can find me. And then you can also find me on Twitter uh, at Mixed Genie in a Bottle. That's M-X-G-I-N-I-I-N-A-B-O-T-T-L-E. I love you so much, Aki. Yeah. <laughs> so amazing. Gina. Nice. Okay. I'm, I'm so bad at these. Okay. So... <laughs> Uh, speaking of me loving and playing goblins, if you want to see me play a goblin, uh, if, if you enjoy podcasts, I play a goblin on the Plunders and Blunders podcast with some uh, notable people that you would recognize, one lovely Sam DeLev and, and the like. Um, and 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 Aki, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, every Sunday we're on Tempting Fate uh, over at Saving Throw Show. Um, uh, that's we play Lasers and Feelings. It's really fun and silly. We play. We're playing Batverse right now. I just played a villain. Hence the having to do the evil laugh a lot. Yeah. Um, 
And then uh, here, with TBD RPG, the all-female uh, troupe that plays whatever we feel like. Um, <laughs> and then uh, also podcast, Champions of the Earth. Um, we are magical kids that battle bad things <laughs> and have a lot of hormones. <laughs> Usually it's hormones that are the things we're battling. <laughs> Jeremy. Um, well, I uh, have a show that's currently out um, called Hicksters. It's, uh, it's a fun comedy um, about a interracial couple that goes, uh, that gets, inherits a, uh, we're, we're from New York City, we inherit a farm and move to rural Pennsylvania. And uh, so it's a comedy show about that, really kind of a ending up in a random fish out of water type situation. Um, so that's on YouTube currently, and it's starring uh, myself and the lovely Christina Wren from uh, Batman vs. Superman and Man of Steel. And I uh, have uh, another show that I'm doing dubbing for, which I did the, the first season of, on Netflix called The Chosen One, and it is, um, you'll see another man's face and hear my voice. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can go on Netflix and see that and just make sure you change the audio from Portuguese to English and you'll hear me. Um, and Neat. there's a, yes, uh, currently a commercial for Hulu that's just air, started airing on Sunday. And then some couple things. Yes, thank you. And a couple things that I cannot tell you yet. Um, but if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Jay Walker Scene, it'll all be on there very, very soon. And of course, season two of the Knights of Everflame. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason, <laughs> uh, I got a lot of stuff. Um, uh, you know, so um, I do. Uh, I'm in a lot of different mediums, right? So uh, in the office right now, we're we're finishing up work on the Game Mastery Guide, which is the book that comes out uh, in uh, the winter. Uh, in a few weeks after, uh, in October, we're going to release the Advanced Player's Guide Playtest. Uh, this is a playtest for four brand new classes to be added to the game. The Witch, Ooh. the Oracle, the uh, uh, Swashbuckler, and the uh -oh. Investigator. Can Those we multi-class? Can you multi-class? We can talk about it. All right. Um, we can figure out a way to make that work. Although you're already a little multi-class. No, she's a little multi-other things. Class. Oh. Just wants to be multi yes, uh, I want so, to be many um, things. So uh, we're working on that. Um, in addition, uh, I have a, a weekly game uh, that we play in the Paizo office with just me and some other Paizo staffers called the Oblivion Oath. That's a Pathfinder second edition game that actually, for those of you who are interested, takes place in the same time frame as Knights of Everflame. Oh, cool! But oh, it's cool. on the other side of the lake. Their group left last Snickless, wall. Snickless. No, of Lake and Carthen, the really oh. big lake oh. in the middle. The, the, big, the best. They're, they're <laughs> their, their group started in Last Wall as well oh. and left right before things went bad. So before the events of this show, but now they're after. Anyway, um, so uh, that that's the other show I got going on. There's uh, convention appearances. Obviously, I think I'm going to be at uh, PAX Unplugged later this year. And oh, uh, and then uh, well, uh, last but not least, you can always catch me on various forms of social media, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I also have my own personal Twitch channel where I hang out and mostly play video games with folks. Um, right now, it's WoW Classic because why not? Yeah. Um, but you can find me on all those different platforms just by typing in the platform name and doing backslash Jason Bullman, J-A-S-O-N. B U L M A H N. The H always trips everybody up. Yeah, it yeah. does. Yeah, so they, it took me a while. That thing wanders around. Yeah. It does. Sometimes yeah. there's more than one. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's four H's yeah. in there now. There's yeah. been times where I've done B U L H. Yeah, that's And then I'm like, common. no, 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 that's no, no, not right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I feel really bad for anybody who actually is spelled B U L H M A N yeah. because they're like, who the hell is this guy? Just kidding. Rachel. Woo. Um, I'm on blank slate. That Aki's coming in to do the the like three point season three point five doodad. Um, my character is also I have a type. She's a creepy necromantic uh, young woman. She's a lot of fun. She's getting married. <gasps> Congratulations! What? I know. It's crazy. This what? is the first time I've ever had a character in a long term relationship, and they just are ending up married. And we're gonna do. I think we're gonna do the the whole wedding on stream as part of the story. And I'm really excited. It's run by Ryan Omega, who I love him. He just had his birthday and he's the best. Go tell him happy birthday. Uh, just great. It's just so much fun acting 
in that show. I love it. And I'm also in Girls Gets Glory, <gasps> the, the broadcast. broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can work on it. Yeah, we'll yeah. Uh, as 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 our the the Halflin Halflin Ranger Huckle Huckle Huckleberry Oakley is his full name, ma'am. Uh, he's real nice and sweet. And then. Also, maybe doing something I can't talk about right now next year. Something big and fun, but I, I don't think I, I don't think I can talk about it yet. So, secret things in the future. Oh yeah, yeah, Erica. Oh, yeah. Um, you can also find me on the broadcast, yeah. uh, which is our uh, podcast that releases new episodes every Monday, where I play Starla High Hill, the Halfling Ranger, Halfling Rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Who am I? Where am I? What's happening? Um, <laughs> What's and the name of Starla High Heel? Starla High Heel. Starla High Heel. <laughs> amazing. Um, I like and I also yeah. just started <laughs> streaming on Twitch regularly. Ooh, hello. Uh, and you can find me on all the. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me on all the social media at A Style Pixie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, just a reminder, it is uh, September until uh, Ooh, yeah, September yeah, yeah, yeah. 24th. Correct, Devin? Yeah, September 24th. So subs are half price on Twitch. Look at emotes. Your emotes. Oh, emotes look at emotes. Can we, oh, can yay. we thank the Silent Infinite for earlier? Yeah. Like, yes. Gifting a hundred, oh, oh, 100 yes. subs. Silent Infinite, thank you so Crazy. much. Very thank nice. you. Um, uh, Very be fun. sure to take advantage of September. It, uh, September. It runs until the 24th. And be sure to subscribe to Geek and Sundry with yeah. that. Uh, September uh, subscription so you can check out all of the VODs from Knights of Everflame Season 1 as well as Knights of Everflame Season 2 that's going to be coming up here very soon. <laughs> um, Aki, thank you for Skyping in with us. Yeah, Yay. 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 Thank you, Aki. I could be here with you. I miss you all so much. We miss you. We miss you. Have a lovely we'll see trip. You soon. Uh, thank you all at the table here for being here with me. Thank you so, so much. I'm excited to get back into this with everyone. Yeah, Me too. I'm ready. So tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yes, very <laughs> soon. Yes. I need to go right yeah <laughs> and if anyone is at the nerd expo this weekend in pasadena oh. i'll be there with geek and sundry so come say hello oh, awesome. yeah i want to go thank all of you for watching thank you thank you thank you we could not do this without you um there would be no pathfinder season two if it wasn't for you loving pathfinder season one um and uh stick around here on geek and sundry thank you <laughs>